All right, welcome to how we draw free body diagrams. And these are also known as force diagrams. So in each one of these diagrams, um, we consider uh, an object that uh, might be, for example, a box. I'll draw a box here. And then there is some sort of force or forces acting on that box. Now I drew this box sitting on the ground. So I'll just go ahead and label that here, um, that it is sitting on the ground. And so if it is sitting on the ground and not floating around in the air, then there must be uh, a force acting on that box that holds it down. And if you're thinking, oh yeah, I know that, that's gravity. Um, that's exactly right. And so we can go ahead and, uh, and add that force arrow in. And remember, we always label these. They start out as force, the letter F. And then as a subscript, we're just gonna use G, force gravity. Okay, pulling it down. Now, it's not falling down through the ground. It is sitting on the ground, which means that the ground is um, pushing back as a push or a pull as a force, right? So there is a force acting on the box from the ground, pushing it uh, back. Okay, so we're going to add that arrow in. And if I drew these right, those two arrows that is the force normal. Force normal or normal forces are those that push uh, against um, uh, the force of gravity. All right, now our box is just sitting on the ground. And so if we keep in mind that force equals mass times acceleration, I'll use a lowercase a there, force times mass force equals mass times acceleration. If we want that box to go somewhere, um, then we could apply a force to it. So if we have a person over on this side, and we'll make this a nice young lady over here, and she is gonna push on this box. Okay, she's gonna push on this box and she is going to be pushing in this direction, okay? And she has a force, and we're gonna use the letter T for thrust because uh, when we talk about, uh, for example, boats and planes and cars, um, we often talk about thrust and then drag. So as she's pushing that way, and we have forces that act in the opposite direction. And so when you're thinking about, okay, what might those be? Well, we actually have two of them. We have a force of friction on the ground. And we also have another force because we're doing this on planet earth. And so we have a force of air resistance. So I'm just gonna write Okay, air resistance. And so friction with the ground. So I'll put a FG there, friction with the ground, as well as air resistance. And I can put an A in there for air resistance. And so if we take all of these arrows and we put them into one diagram, so we can put um, the force to the ground, as well as the force normal, as well as the thrusting force. And then we have the force of air resistance and the force. Uh, and if we know what each of those numbers is, then we can actually figure out which way this is going. Well, we know that this, the force of, of gravity, um, force equals mass times acceleration. So we can go back and actually figure out um, if the mass of our crate, all right, and let's just say it is 10 kilograms, and so the force gravity would be 10 times 10, so that is a force of 100 newtons, and since it's not falling anywhere, we know that our normal force matches that. 
and is also 100 newtons, okay? Because that would be times 10, right? Because G is 10 and that, whoa. And that would be uh, 100, put that back in there. and that is G. Okay, then we measure our other forces in Newton. So let's say that the young lady is pushing with a force of 20 Newtons and that the air resistance is one Newton and that the force of uh, friction on the ground is uh, four Newtons. Well, if we add up all these forces in all these different directions, we're going to see that our, and I'm gonna write this word out here, that our resultant force or our net force, okay, is going to be equal to plenty, okay, minus, because it's going in the opposite direction, four plus one, so five, okay? So these two right there go to five, all right? And the 100 and 100 cancel out. So that is 15 Newtons. And we always have to remember that's the magnitude. So we have to say the direction and it is moving in that direction to the right. So our resultant force is 15 Newtons to the right.